that starting in 2013 that we have gotten rid of some of these egregious loopholes that are benefiting corporate jet owners or oil companies at a time where they're, they're making billions of dollars of profits. Okay, joining us now is one of the people the president wants to tax. That is Peter Schiff, president of Euro Pacific Capital. Peter, great to see you. Thanks for joining us tonight. All right, so you just wrote, you're, we're going to get a deal here, but really, does it matter? I know you've been on the record saying the debt, just leave the debt ceiling alone, but all of this political negotiation, will it end in meaningful deficit reduction? Well, absolutely not. In fact, you know, the White House is putting out a smoke screen here. Uh, they're trying to create fear by saying that if we don't raise the debt ceiling, there's going to be a default. You know, if the president really cared about our credit rating, what he would say is that under no circumstances will there be a default. If we don't raise the debt ceiling, uh, we will cut other spending. We will make sure to honor our payments of interest in principle in a timely manner. It's, he doesn't care. He's just trying to scare people so that we raise the debt ceiling when the best thing we can do for the American economy and for our bondholders is not to raise the debt ceiling and cut spending instead. And don't you think, Peter, that the U.S. is kind of getting a break considering all the turmoil going on with the European debt crisis, right? So that's probably keeping U.S. rates lower than they otherwise would be at this juncture. I agree. We're temporarily benefiting from the fact that the world is being side uh, distracted by what's going on in the sideshow over there in Europe. I think the main event is here. I think the dollar has a lot more problems. And, you know, it's very dangerous what the president is doing by basically telling our creditors that we're not going to pay you back if we can't go deeper into debt. We're basically telling them that default is inevitable. It's just a question of time, because right now uh, we have a self-imposed debt ceiling. But at some point, if foreigners don't want to lend us any more money, then what are we going to do? Well, President Obama is telling them, we will default. If you don't lend us more money, we're not going to pay you back what we've already borrowed. Right. So then what will, it, what will a budget structure look like if it is longer term? I know they've already shortened the time frame, right? But I know you've written as well that you don't expect any meaningful spending cuts, at least for the first couple of years. And then by the time they click in, we'll have a whole new host of problems. Yeah, the, the out years are meaningless. You know, when the, when, the, when the Republicans are saying we want, you know, a dollar of deficit reduction for every dollar we increase the debt ceiling. I mean, that's ridiculous. We're increasing the debt ceiling by two trillion for one year. They're talking about cutting two trillion in spending now over 10 years, which is only 200,000 a year. But of course, none of that spending cuts happens in the first year. And it's all just an illusion anyway. And you know what also bothers me when they keep talking about America has never defaulted on its debts. That's a lie. You know, in 1970, if you owned treasury bonds, if you had $35 worth of U.S. Treasury bonds, the U.S. Treasury promised to pay you an ounce of gold. And then in 1971, we defaulted on that promise. We told our creditors, we are not going to pay you the gold that we promised to pay. That was a default, and it had catastrophic consequences because look what happened in the 1970s. We had runaway inflation. Uh, we had a tenfold increase in the price of oil. That was a real default. What we're talking about now, I mean, we don't promise to give our credit creditors anything for their paper except more paper. Right. All right. So you're famously bullish on gold, Peter. How else are you investing? How are you navigating this chaos and putting your investments? Well, I'm staying out of the dollar, but I mean, but I want to backtrack because I, I was laughing when you played that clip where the president talked about the egregious tax break for corporate jet owners. You know what that tax break is? That instead of depreciating their jets over seven years, the way commercial airlines do it, they depreciate them over five years. That's not even a subsidy. I think that the corporations should be able to write off the entire amount of the purchase in one year, the year that they make it. The fact that they have to stretch out the write-off over five years isn't a subsidy. It's a penalty. And besides, this is tiny amounts of money. They are demagoguing this issue. This is not about fat cats uh, with private jets. If, we, if the president really wants mm -hmm. to cut the budget deficit with tax increases, they're going to have to raise income taxes on the middle class. That's the only way to do it. And if Peter, they're not going to raise taxes on the middle class, they got to cut spending. We hear you. Always lively chat. Peter Schiff, thanks so much. Thanks. <laughs> okay, on deck here. A liberal